Hi, welcome to Smoking with Swami. I'm Swami Chaitanya, and we have... Hi, I'm Nikki Lestretto, and we have some very special guests here today that have been activists in the cannabis movement since the late 80s. This is Mickey Norris and Chris Conrad. So I met Mickey and Chris at an event to feature their book, this new book that came out called Shattered Lives. They've done a ton of work in helping people not go to prison or get out of prison for various drug offenses. Really people that should not have ever been there. It's shattered their lives, as you can see by the title. It was very powerful. And it's so nice to reconnect with them now, years later, over Kanamaste, or Kanatheism. First, I need to light this joint so we get in the right proper frame of mind. So here we go, Om Namah Shivaya. And we're going to pass the joint in the traditional way now of the Kanamaste. You'll see Swami's... Uh... Kanamaste. Kanamaste. The hand over the heart. You kind of look in the other person's eyes as well to establish that connection. Well, it comes from the, the Indian greeting of Namaste, <laughs> and the Indian greeting of Namaste, the Hindu greeting, is that I salute the divine in you. You know, you were telling me about channeling this. I thing. think I, that was me. That was oh, you. That okay. was <laughs> Did I get that wrong? I'm sorry. No, no, no. I just want to step back for, for one thing, yeah. is that we were also looking to create a religious defense in court oh, to protect, okay. pe give people another, while we didn't have legalization, we right. wanted to give people another avenue to, to fight. Uh, right, I used the first and the 14th amendment, I wrote what the requirements yeah. were, I formulated the basics, and like you said, one of the things that you can't just make up the spur of the moment because you want to break the law, so we tied into this whole thing the Thracians, the uh, Scythians, the Hindus, yeah, right. the, yeah, the ancient the, history, the, the right. Rostrians, etc. Right. And we found this whole line, so it's not, it's, it's like, uh, it's not just a, a, a scheme or something, it's like something that's been it's part a of the It's yeah. yeah, For millennia, right. people have right. gotten a spiritual get off of mm -hmm. cannabis and right. they have used it sacramentally. Right. Yeah, exactly. And we don't want it to get lost inside and be like mm -hmm. just drinking beer, like I said. Yeah. So, right. so the idea right. is to reconnect into right. that. And so uh, that's where the like, mm -hmm. canatheism or is originally, yeah. canatheism or canatheism. We have various well, Tell spellings. us how you came so, up with this name so that it involves people that might be a little bit afraid of the word church, basically, <laughs> right? Uh, right. Well, actually, the original thing I was calling it was cannabism, but it sounded way too much like cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> no, I made a mistake one time when I, we were talking about ethical cannabis, and I said, well, let's have some ethical cannibalism. And plus, cannabis actually means daily smoker of marijuana. It right. used to, anyway. Right. And so so I didn't necessarily might make it to a daily use, necessarily. And then we had canism, but then that sounded like cantism. Uh, so then it came up with cant. <laughs> Theism, which was really because we want the First Amendment protects the freedom of religion, so we want to make clear it's a religion, it's a theism. Uh, but then when we found people, a lot of people found that we talked to had a spiritual relationship with cannabis, but they don't believe in God, so they felt there was a connection with nature, a connection with their inner self, a connection with the humanity, universe. yeah, the universe. They had all these things they were connected to that weren't a God. Uh, and so then uh, when we were talking about possible ways of incorporating that, we have the alternative smell of canatheism that has atheism for people who don't believe in any kind of a God entity. Good and canatheism for those who do. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so we cover both of our bases on that. But I thought one of the most interesting things was how many people came to us that they said, you know, I don't believe in God, but when I smoke cannabis, it's, I get this connection. When I was telling you about channeling, I was thinking that, you know, I feel like cannabis in, in a way, in our activism and other people's activism, I, I feel like it kind of chooses people to become their spokespeople huh. and people to work for, for the, the better good. And I feel like cannabis has compelled me to do good. And yet another twist on this is that the courts, as far as religious practice are concerned, they don't necessarily see free will as being that big of a player on it because they mm -hmm. said if we had a, a church where they're something is optional to do, uh, like growing marijuana or smoking marijuana, they, then just don't do it. It's an option. You don't. It's not part of your religion. You uh -huh. don't have to do it. And so uh -huh. we have these basic things with people who are cantheists. You have to do certain things. You don't necessarily have to smoke marijuana, but you have to possess marijuana. You have to share it. <laughs> and huh. certain people have to grow it. Right. But only those people know who they are. 
And so what this means <laughs> is that if you're in a, in a state like Nebraska, Idaho, theoretically, and you get busted, then you have a First Amendment argument that, you know, that I have to have this marijuana. I have to go to this marijuana. I have to share this marijuana. Now, we can't say that you have to sell it because the, the courts have been very clear that commercial is different from uh, spiritual, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, thank goodness. But see, what's some... interesting to me is that in order to create this originally, as you say, a defense, a spiritual defense or a religious defense, you sort of go to and research, well, what does the court say it actually defines a religion, both in terms of the Constitution, but also in case history as well, right? right. So if you're a religion, you have to have this, you have to have this, right. you have to have this. Oh, I have all that. Okay, I'm a religion, right? Mm -hmm. And so you set that up, but it still has that innate imbued spirituality mm -hmm. of the cannabis itself uh -huh. and of the spirit of the people who share it and know that. Mm -hmm. right? And one, some of the things we're supposed to have are these rites and rituals and ceremonies and one of the things we found with cannabis people is it's very hard to get them to, to tell them well here's what you have to do and exactly, here's what you do it. Right. Um, Somehow I can't imagine that a church based on cannabis which is such a do your own thing go with the flow sort of experience has a whole lot of dogma attached to it. Uh, what we assemble and then uh, we light a candle uh, after, and we've already got the, the joint there and so then we um, light the joint and uh, use the canamaste as we hand it to the next person with hand on the heart, passing the joint with the right hand. Then uh, then we use this next period, I usually start off by saying the names of people that we're trying to represent spiritually who their feel less spirit is here and then we do the uh, Cantheus Creed uh, and then after that we have a uh, visualization and after that, there's a period of silence where people can experience the cannabis internally. And then oh, that's maybe three minutes, but we're also talking about more four minutes and 20 seconds just because of the obvious connection. And that, the reason I think that that's kind of cool is because, number one, the spontane spontaneous nature of 420 coming into our society. And also because every day at 420, you know there's other cantheists who are consuming cannabis. So exactly. even if you're not with a group of people, mm -hmm. you can smoke cannabis in a cannabis No, it's going to be a national holiday really, really yeah. soon. No question about it. Mm -hmm. It's already well on the way. If someone really wants to get involved with Kanama State, then they're locally in the Bay Area, they're nationally, maybe they're international. How do they do that? Are there going to be chapters around? Is there a website or what would, how would people get involved? Well, the easiest way to get involved is, of course, is to do your, do your own kind of a stay at 420 and connect with the other people. Uh, and Or you can have a group of people or, that are friends that are also interested in this. And once you understand the, the creed and the passing of the uh, uh, sacrament, the rest of it, pretty much, you know, you're free form to spin uh -huh. off the local things very much. But also we have our websites, uh, cantheism.org, canatheism.org, can uh, can, uh, can I, oh, you've got a I think they're all orgs. Okay, okay. <laughs> but if you search for it, you'll find us, and then uh, you can drop us an email, and we can send you stuff. But basically, the information is on the website, so that uh -huh. people can adopt it. And if somebody has a, a legal fight where they want to assert their cantheist rights um, somewhere, then they would contact me directly, and I can see if I can help them. We have other people who are experts in uh, the religious defense, and we're going to try to get that going too. Well, this has been absolutely fascinating, and I'm so proud that we are members of the Church of Kanamaste, <laughs> and it's really bringing already a lot of depth to my experience with cannabis, personally. I really feel that. Mm. So I want to thank you guys for that mm, and for absolutely. creating this and all the work you have done for so many people <laughs> out of true compassion and love for so many years. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much again, I'll echo Nikki's result. And, uh, you know, take your cannabis uh, with you and make it an, a spiritual experience, an inspirational uh, ally, and uh, that's what that's going to carry us forward. So anyway, thank you for joining us on Smoking with Swami, and uh, we'll see you next time.